let's show an addition reaction to a conjugated diene. So here's my conjugated diene. I'm going to add hydrochloric acid to it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and number my conjugated diene, uh, not really thinking about uh, nomenclature, just numbering it so I can identify the carbon positions on my diene. And so I know the first step of this mechanism is the pi electrons, and one of those, and one of those pi bonds is going to function as a base and take a proton. So I'm going to say that these pi electrons in here between 1 and 2, uh, those pi electrons are going to function as a base and pick up the proton from HCl. So this lone pair of electrons is going to bond with that proton, which kicks these electrons off onto the chlorine. So let's go ahead and draw the result of that acid-base reaction. So I have two choices, right? I can add that proton onto carbon 1, or I can add that proton onto carbon 2. And I'm going to add that proton onto carbon 1, because that would take away a bond from carbon 2 and make carbon 2 a carbocation. Right? So carbon 2 here is a carbocation. It is an allylic carbocation, right? because the carbon that has the plus 1 formal charge is right next to another carbon that is sp2 hybridized right here. So it's an allylic carbocation. It's a tertiary allylic carbocation, so it's very stable. In the next step of the mechanism, I just formed a chloride anion, right? so a negatively charged chloride anion. And so that negative charge is now going to function as a nucleophile. Right? And the nucleophile is going to attack the electrophile. So opposite charges attract, and the chloride anion is going to form a bond with my carbocation. And so I'm going to get my product. I added the proton to carbon 1, and I added, I'm going to add the chlorine, the halogen, to carbon 2. So this is the 1, 2 adduct product. And let me go ahead and, and draw the result of that. Right? So if I go ahead and show the chlorine adding to carbon 2 like that, I still had a double bond right here. And this is one of the possible products. Let's go ahead and name this product using IUPAC nomenclature. So what we would do is number our ring to give our alkene here the lowest number. So one, two, three. So I have a, a, a chlorine at three, a methyl group at three. And so when I would give the IUPAC name, it would be three chloro, three chloro, three methyl, and then that it would be cyclohexene. So 3-chloro, 3-methyl, cyclohexene, like that would be the name. So that's one possible product. Let's go back up here to the allylic carbocation, and let's think about a possible resonance structure. Right? So I can go ahead and draw a resonance structure for this molecule. And I could take these pi electrons in here right, and move them uh, between carbons 2 and 3. So I could go ahead and move that pi bond between carbon 2 and 3. And so I still have a methyl group there. I still added a proton to the first position. And so I'm taking a bond away from carbon 4. I took a bond away from this carbon. So this is carbon 4. So that must be where my plus 1 formal charge is. So I have a plus 1 formal charge right there. So this would be the resonance structure. And it's another allylic carbocation. So it's a possibility that my chloride anion is going to attack at the carbon 4 position, right? So nucleophilic attack, opposite charges attract, and I would add my halogen on to the 4 position. So this is another possible product here. So I'm going to, I still added the proton onto 1. I had the halogen onto 4, so this is a 1, 4 addition. And when I draw the product, uh, right. I, I'm going to go ahead and add the chlorine onto the fourth position, and I had a double bond right here and a methyl group right here. So that would be my product. If I wanted to give that product an IUPAC name, right? Once again, I would have to, when I'm numbering my cyclohexene ring, I would have to give this a number one to give the lowest possible number to my substituent. So this would be two and then three. So when I name it, I would get three chloro. 1 methyl cyclohexene. So 3 chloro, 1 methyl cyclohexene. So these are obviously different products. All right, so that's, th those, are, those are two possible products in this reaction. Um, so if I go back up to here, those are the products that would result if the pi electrons in magenta started off with the acid-base reaction. Now we're going to do it again, except this time we're going to look at these pi electrons here between 3 and 4. So what if those electrons um, were to function as our base? Let's go ahead and get some room, and let's, let's, uh, let's show another mechanism, right? So I'm just going to redraw my original alkene, my conjugated diene, I should say. All right, so let me go ahead and put in my conjugated diene right here. And this time, when we do the mechanism, we're going to show 
these pi electrons functioning as a base, right? So these are going to function as my base, so I can go ahead and show HCl here. Right, so there's HCl like that. And again, if I'm going to number my conjugated diene, I, I'm not concerned about IUPAC nomenclature numbering. I, I'm just identifying where my carbons are. So I'm going to say, now this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, and carbon 4, just to help me track my carbons a little bit better. So when I think about the first step of the mechanism, and it being an acid-base reaction where my pi electrons are going to pick up a proton, right? these pi electrons here are going to pick up a proton, which kicks these electrons off onto the chlorine. And I would now draw the resulting carbocation. Right, so I still have a, uh, a double bond here, a methyl group right here. And once again, I have to think about where will that proton add. That proton is going to add to carbon 1, because that would give carbon 2 a plus 1 formal charge, and once again create an allylic carbocation. So I'm talking about this carbocation right here. It's secondary. It's connected to two other carbons. But it's also an allylic carbocation, so a secondary allylic carbocation. And uh, again, in my mechanism, the chloride anion is going to function as a nucleophile, right? So it's negatively charged. So the negatively charged chloride anion is going to nucleophilic attack the positive charge. And I will end up with my product. So let me go ahead and draw the dot structure. Right? So when I draw the dot, stru dot structure for that, I am going to get, uh, I still have a double bond here, still have a methyl group here. I have a chlorine right here as well. So this would be the 1, 2 adduct. Right? So if I'm thinking about the numbers I had over here on the left, I added a proton to the first position. I added a chlorine to the second position. So here's the first position. Here's the second position. This would be the 1, 2 adduct. We can go ahead and name it. So if I wanted to name that using IUPAC nomenclature, I would number it so that this would give me carbon 1, right, to get the lowest number possible to my substituent there. And that forces me to go around the ring this way, because of course it's following my double bond there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the official IUPAC name, there's a chlorine at 6, so it'd be 6 chloro. And then there's a methyl at 1, so 1 methyl. And then it's cyclohexene. So 6-chloro-1-methyl-cyclohexene would be the name of this product. Let's go back up to the allylic carbocation. And uh, let's go ahead and draw the resonance structure that's possible. right? So I can draw a resonance structure for this, where I take these electrons in here, and I move them over to here. And let me go ahead and draw that resulting carbocation. Right, so my methyl group is there, my, my pi electrons had moved right here, I had added the proton onto carbon 1, and I took a bond away from what I'm calling the fourth carbon. Right, This was the fourth carbon over here, so this is the fourth carbon. I took a bond away from this carbon, that's where my carbocation is going to be. So that would be a carbocation at the 4 position, my allylic carbocation. And once again, thinking about the mechanism, the chloride anion functions as a nucleophile, attacks my electrophile right there. So let me go ahead and close my resonance brackets. And we can go ahead and draw the product. Uh, so let me go ahead and get some space down here. So I'm going to show the, the chlorine adding to what I'm calling the 4 position at the top there. So I'm going to show the chlorine adding to the top. And then the, the double bond was over here. And then the methyl group was right here. So if you wanted to name this one, all right, you, would, uh, you, would start, you would start right here, carbon 1. And then you go 1, 2, three, four, five, six. So this is also 6-chloro-1-methyl-cyclohexene. So these two are actually the same product. Okay? And actually, this is going to be the minor product in this reaction. So this is going to be the minor product. And the reason why this is the minor product compared to the two above is the fact that when we start off when we started off this mechanism, we got a secondary allylic carbocation, right? So this carbocation right here, this one's bonded to two other carbons. So this is a secondary allylic carbocation. And if we compare that to to the first thing that we did here, right? The first thing that we did, this carbocation right here, that one is bonded to three other carbons. So that would be a tertiary allylic carbocation, which is more stable than a secondary. And so it's more likely that this first mechanism we did is going to be the major product. So these two right here, we've proven those two are different molecules. 
All right, we've proven that these two things are different molecules, and these will be our major products. And then the one that we did down here would be the minor product for this reaction. So that was a lot of work uh, to figure out the products, but, um, but walk through the mechanism and think about 1, 2 versus 1, 4 addition and think about carbocation stability.